What's up wingnuts, you have entered quite the clusterfuck today, let me break down what's going on. I got this new bike and it's running the tubeless system. Now I don't know shit about tubeless, but I'll tell you what, I can air up a damn tire. So I see this thing's got two nipples on it, and in typical male fashion I'm like, I don't need no fucking instructions, I squirt a little air in one of them, squirt a little air in the other one, and I'm good to go. Well, to make a long story short, I get up to the line and some guy's like, Hey bro, uh, your tire's looking a little low. I looked down and yeah, it was a whole ass flat tire. So what you're seeing now is me frantically scrambling back from my trailer where I refilled my tire. We pull up to the line with what should be the advantage of everybody else having a fried clutch. Shout out to whoever was flagging this race. But it doesn't help because I get off to a shit start anyways, looking like 8th place into the first turn. Lucky for us, the guy on the 944 bike gives his handlebars a kiss and we get by for 7th place. After we come out of this little set of trees, you're going to see just why it's so crucial to get good starts in these races. I don't know if it looks better or worse on the GoPro than it did to the naked eye. All I can tell you is I couldn't see shit. Now would probably be a good time to say, if you're not one to keep up on my videos, this is a part 2. Because in the first moto that I've already done a video on, uh, I had some trouble with this sequence, so we're going to do a little flashback. First off, I'm not sure why I keep taking this line off to the left here, but you think a crash like that would be something that sticks with you, right? Well, not your boy, because whoop! My stupid ass comes within millimeters of doing it again. Now I always say I'll try anything twice, but man, there's plenty of trees in the sea or however that saying goes. I don't know why I like that one so much. You know, I think everything's got me a little bit shook and I get off track here, which allows Morgan Wheelwright to get by. Now I want to stop to give a big shout out to Morgan's grandma, Millie. This one's for you, baby. This episode might as well be titled The Morgan Wheelwright Show because she's going to be in it a lot. Now, if you happen to watch this and you decide you want some of this footage, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I keep all the raw files, so you don't have to have the version that is ruined by my commentary, my lap counters, my place, uh, all that stuff that I add on after the fact. And that goes for anybody else as well. Uh, if you see yourself in one of my videos, um, or we're going to be racing the same class, whatever the case, and you want some of the footage that I have, uh, feel free to get a hold of me, um, come talk to me at the race, whatever, and uh, we'll get that done. I think it would be super cool to know all the people that I'm racing against, so, you know, especially when I'm making these videos, I could say, oh, well, there goes Bryce, that little bitch, just passed me or uh, you know, whatever. Hopefully I'm the one making the passes, but the point is, don't be shy, come talk to me. Uh, we'll shoot the shit and you'll get some cool race footage out of it. On your screen here, we are finishing up the first little section of the motocross track. Um, I believe you come out onto it three times during one lap. Uh, I'm still following Morgan in eighth place. And if you're not familiar with my format, I normally like to leave the first lap intact and then start cutting it down as the video goes on to save some time. And speaking of format, since things were, uh, we'll just say, a little bit different at the beginning of this race, I don't think I got the chance to talk about the where, the when, and the what this race actually was. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. This was uh, July 27th, 2019. It was a Grand Prix at Fox Valley Off-Road. And if you're not aware of what a Grand Prix is, I have a video on that already. Uh, I will link that down below in the description. And then I also want to remind you, this is like a part two. Um, this is my second moto of this day. I already did a video on the first one. Uh, if you want to check that out, it will also be in the description. So back to the race, uh, as the lap goes on, I started getting some of my comfort level back and looking for places to make passes. This particular day, I felt like I was a little bit faster than she was, uh, but I wasn't exactly riding aggressive enough to capitalize on the small windows that she was giving me. Um, and actually, for as small as Morgan is, she does a pretty good job uh, making herself wide on the track and hard to get around. But as you see me casually flow through this switchback, I'm definitely not doing myself any favors either. I think I was kind of in the mindset of, you know, don't do too much and make a mistake. But looking back on it, I think maybe I wasn't doing quite enough either. Coming out into this open area, there is something I'd like to talk about though. 
I did mention in my last video that I like what they did with the track and the trail here. I realized that I really do like this style of riding. Um, ironically enough, it's probably one of the styles that I still need the most work on, especially the really tight stuff. But getting into like what we're doing here on your screen, a little bit flowy, kind of single track, uh, woods riding. Man, I don't know if it gets any better than that. Now that got me thinking. I like all flavors of dirt bike riding. Um, motocross, woods racing, whatever I can throw my leg over, I'm here for it. So your opinion might vary a little bit from mine depending on what you like to do. But even when it's human nature to think uh, the grass is always greener on the other side, I can't think of somewhere that I would rather live from a riding standpoint than the good old Midwest. I think for motocross we got really good dirt and from the enduro standpoint uh, I think we've got some really good terrain, some of the better terrain out there for that as well. Um, that's a topic that I could spend a whole video on and I think maybe I will. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Where would you like to live? And what do you and do you not like about the riding where you're living now? Let me know and we will put together a video using some of that feedback to uh, talk about who actually has it the best. So we just finished up our first lap and now we're jumping forward about a minute to where we're coming out onto the track. At this point I find some of that aggression I was looking for earlier and take the inside to make a pass. I don't really take your line away which kind of puts us in this drag race where I eventually pull away. Now I think that's 90% me having more bike than her and 10% having more balls to not be the first one to let off. And I should have more balls because, well, yeah. So I'm feeling good now, it's lap two, I'm ready to start charging, and well, maybe I'm feeling a little bit too good because. Now, hold the hell on. I'm sorry, but does this feel like deja vu to anybody else? Now that flashback is from my first moto, which I dropped the video on probably two weeks ago. In real time, it was probably less than two hours between those crashes. After that debacle, we jumped forward about three minutes to the end of lap two. And needless to say, I gave up the uh, seventh position, which I held for maybe a total of 15 seconds. So we crossed the line to finish up lap two and it comes in at five minutes and four seconds. Now if you look up at the left hand corner I put the splits on there and I have it as being uh, 11 seconds faster than the first lap which seems pretty significant but I now realize that has a lot to do with the start sequence uh, to get into the trail. Anyways these last couple laps uh, the racing really starts to pick up and intensify. I'm still trying to chase Morgan down for 7th place but at a lot of times looking past her you can also see 6th place as well. So obviously I'm pushing and kind of charging with the uh, possibility of a double pass in mind and that's when uh, my guy Nick Smith snaps this picture here where it looks like I'm trying to twist the throttle off of my handlebars. Shout out to 893 Photography for capturing me in my natural habitat with perfect riding form. So after that glamorous photo shoot, we've got this big downhill to traverse and that will eventually lead us back into uh, the motocross track. Once we get out there, you're gonna see me try to put the exact same move on Morgan, taking the inside. Uh, this time though, it is very poorly executed and I don't know if she was having it anyway. So we are still sitting in eighth place. As we get a little further down the track, uh, she goes straight freaking Mario Kart style and starts throwing up these little roost clouds at me. Then coming up after this next turn and straight away I've got that loose sandy flat type of corner that obviously I need a lot of work on. I've already crashed twice on it today so let's see if I can hold it together this time. Alright, so not exactly a pro level execution there but progress. At this point in the race it doesn't really seem like I'm making up too much ground on the track but I do need to find a way to close that gap a little bit so if she opens the door I can make a pass. She very considerately leaves us one more nice little dust cloud before it's time to leave the track. And coming up into this uphill um, I did kind of consider it as a place to potentially make a pass. I don't wind up actually getting by her on this hill but what does happen is I close up some of that gap and that puts me in better position to make a pass later on. Now this is definitely something that I've got to get sorted out for this year, uh, being more efficient with my passes, figuring out when and where to get by, and being more efficient at capitalizing on those small windows that open here and there. Like I can see them now, but in the moment, no. 
going up this hill she has a little bit of a bobble and if I was on my shit I might have been able to get by right there maybe maybe not but it definitely wasn't gonna happen doing whatever goofy stuff I was doing that led me to knock my GoPro sideways like it is then you see me try to make a pass on the inside there on that field section and that's probably not the best way to go about that she closed the door on me which you're naturally gonna have with the shape of a turn if you take the inside to pass but you can see that I'm still hunting still looking for places to get by As we come down this hill that would normally dump us out on the motocross track, I instead cut forward about a minute and 30 seconds towards the end of the third lap. As we ride up towards the finish line area, you'll see that me in eighth place, Morgan in seventh, uh, the guy in front of her in sixth have all been running in this pack for a while now. But as I roll through the gate here in a second, you'll notice up in the left hand corner with my split times that I ran a five minute lap, which is four seconds faster than my previous so i'm not really sure if this group racing is slowing me down or speeding me up at this point either way i'm sure you noticed but we made a two minute jump uh just basically skipped over the motocross section for this lap after we all entered this hill climb together i decided that the field coming up afterwards was the perfect time to pull the trigger on making a pass i learned my lesson last lap about trying to make the pass on the inside so this time i kind of slingshot around the outside and if i committed to it earlier i might have been able to take sixth place as well we jump forward about a minute to what I would call the last section of our fourth and final lap. I'm still running on the heels of the guy in sixth place in front of me, but I know there's not a lot of time left. So coming up there is an opportunity to make a pass. It's a line that I followed somebody else through earlier off to the right. Boom, there it went, and I blew it. <laughs> that is how being too focused on the person in front of you will bite you right in the ass. As we follow him through the rest of this sequence, I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming along for the ride, and especially if you're still here at this point. This video did run a little bit long, I normally try to aim for about 10 minutes on these types, but if you did like the video, don't forget to give her the old thumbs up, don't forget to drop a comment letting me know what you do and don't like about the types of riding that you have where you live, and most importantly, subscribe to the Wingnut YouTube channel. I've got some absolutely killer content coming up for you guys, so stay tuned. Okay, now let's take one more quick flashback to last moto where I did this at the finish line. Now a couple hours later, I almost did the exact same thing. Talk about some deja vu, that was literally a replica situation. Same dude in front of me, same chick behind me that would have passed me if I fell. Luckily I was just barely able to hold it together, which gave me the overall on her for 6th place on the day. Anyways, I told you this one was a clusterfuck. Uh, and then on top of all that, the last lap that I ran was also my fastest lap of the day, coming in at uh, 4.55, which was the fastest by 5 seconds. I don't know. I got nothing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.